In this video, we're going to be talking about regular expressions, which is a specific query language or syntax that you're going to be using a lot in security analysis, programming, and it's very, very powerful, very, very useful. And it's a skill set that I think you absolutely need if you want to go into ethical hacking, pen testing, or cybersecurity. My name is Hank Hackerson, your host for today. And to get more videos like this or to learn more things about cybersecurity and pen testing, I encourage you to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so that you get notified the next time that a video comes out from this channel. We got a very, very jamming channel, and I think you're going to get a lot of value out of it. But first, this is Hackaholics Anonymous, the premier YouTube community for security professionals and hackers. When I started this journey, there were a lot of tools, there were a lot of resources and information that I didn't have. And at first, I started this channel as a way to collect ideas, tactics, and strategies for my own future reference. And then a community, which is you, gathered around it. And before I knew it, there were dozens of people, and then hundreds of people, and then all of a sudden, thousands of people. And as the time went by through the comments and really a lot of self-reflection, I started to wonder how I could actually add more value to the community. Therefore, the idea for Hackaholics Anonymous popped into my head. And I honestly, I very much love that name. Um, a community of insiders who would be able to show their support and in exchange get some of my best value and a lot of my creations and the things that I really have been working a lot on that I want to give to you guys. So uh, these are things like early access, merchandise discounts, members only videos, Python scripts that I've developed, uh, both for cybersecurity administration, for pen testing, for system administration, a lot of cheat sheets, manuals, live trainings, personal coaching, and much, much more. And the intention behind this whole thing is number one, to help you advance your knowledge and skills at a rapid pace, so much quicker than what you're getting right now. Then to give you access to tools and resources that you can take anywhere and repurpose as needed. So for example, the Python scripts, you can use them for your own computers, you can use them for any jobs that you go to and any contracting jobs that you get, anything that you really can find a purpose for, you can use all of those resources for that free of charge for as much as you want. And next, I wanna build a team of advanced hackers to combine forces with them so that we can go after large bug bounties. And bug bounties are literally things that you can do for companies to find bugs in their systems or to find vulnerabilities, and they'll pay you for that. For example, a million dollar Apple bounty, and this is actually a very real thing where you can get paid a million dollars from Apple if you're able to attack certain parts of their systems and accomplish such bug bounties. So it would be really cool to be able to combine forces with people and then we can go after it and then pull the, the bounties, pull the money out as long as obviously people contribute and we actually do something to get those results. And finally, I really wanna be able to create content full time. As this journey has progressed for me, uh, there's been a very big passion that is developed for teaching and for building this community and it would be amazing to be able to do that full time and not have to worry about things like paying bills and worrying about the necessities of life and if that actually is happening or it gets to happen it would literally be a dream coming true for me so that's kind of like the extra perk at the end of all this that i think it would be it would be amazing if that could actually happen i have no idea if it'll happen or not but it's an intention that i'm putting out into the universe and if it does happen it would be freaking amazing now here's how the perks were actually selected and how I developed the perks for our membership community. First, I did a lot of recon, very similar to what we do when we do pen testing and when we do vulnerability analysis. I did reconnaissance on all the channels that are in this genre and anything similar to this genre to see what those channels were offering to their paid members. And believe it or not, there are literally, and I, I underline that for a reason, there are literally channels that charge $50 a month for being a great supporter, quote unquote. That's basically all they're offering in exchange is, hey, kudos to you, thank you for being a supporter, you know, thanks for giving us $50 a month. And that's basically it. And people contribute, and people actually do uh, contribute those $50 a month because they want to support that channel. But there's no perks, no exchange happening of value i guess there is exchange because the channel is up and they're creating content but that's basically it 
and the person is supporting the channel by offering them whatever they're offering per month. So there are no other extra perks that are attached to somebody becoming a paid member. And that feels, to me, it feels a little bit unfair. So even on the lowest tier of the Hackaholics Anonymous perks, you'll at least get something in return for being a supporter, for actually adding value to our community by using your dollars and cents. So at the very least, we'll give you something in return for that. Now this is tier one. Tier one is the cyber supporter and you get early access to new videos. So 24 hour early access to all the content that comes in, including the videos and tutorials. You get priority reply to comments and you get custom emojis and badges to distinguish you from the rest of our community. And I will give you a shout out in whatever video comes out. As long as I know that there's a new uh, supporter that comes in, I'm going to make a list of all of those people. And I'm going to give you a shout out just to give you a little bit of extra notoriety, give you some PR and boost if you're trying to build your channel out and to just make sure that you get the recognition that you deserve. And then moving on to tier two, which is going to be the cyber agent. And so you get everything from cyber supporters. So all of the perks actually stack on top of each other and you get everything from the previous tiers as well. So you get everything from cyber supporter. The early access to videos bumps up to 48 hours. So it goes from 24 hours to 48 hours. There's member only videos that are attached to this and that includes the bug bounties and it includes the cheat sheets and the manuals. And this is a monthly exclusive content drop that will just include include all the bug bounty missions that we're going to be working on, the progress with those missions, the downloadable cheat sheets and or manuals that would either be attached to those missions or just separate cheat sheets and manuals that I've been stacking as I've been going through my own cybersecurity journey. And then we have the monthly system administration Python automation. So this is a little bit of a beginner level series of Python automations, but they are very heavily stacked. So you kind of do need to know a little bit about Python, but even if you don't, there are going to be source codes, there's going to be documentation that's going to be included, and there's going to be the videos that explain everything and how to customize these Python automations so that you can use them for any system administration job. So for example, provisioning a bunch of new users on Active Directory, where you don't have to do it manually and you can just run the script and make sure as long as you have a document that's connected that has all their usernames and passwords, it literally just runs and creates everything for you and it just makes your life super easy. So it's things like that. And there's gonna be a monthly Python drop that will include these scripts that have all the source code, everything that you would need to actually run it. And it goes for Windows and Mac OS. And then there's the documentation. And then of course there's the videos that tag along with that. And then finally for this, we have the members only discord chat. And this is something that's been really big and I've been getting a lot of comments about this. So there's gonna be weekly chats that are gonna happen where I'll be present, we'll be live, we'll be going back and forth in, a, in the chat. And then you can just ask me anything that you want on Discord. We can have any kind of conversation and we'll be doing this weekly for our cyber agents. The next tier is going to be the Cyber Guardian. And of course, this stacks everything from Cyber Agent as well as Cyber Supporter. So you get all the Python scripts from Cyber Agent. You get all the perks from Cyber Agent as well as Cyber Supporter. So it brings all of that stuff as well as now you get an early access bump up to 72 hours. So the early access to all the content goes up to 72 hours, basically three days. And then you now get members only live streams with Q&A. So we go out of the Discord chat and we actually go into a video environment we'll do a live stream I will do a presentation on a specific topic it could be the bug bounty it could be really anything um, and then on top of that we'll have a session for Q&A where you can just ask all of your questions uh, AMA, uh, AMA which is also ask me anything and we'll just go through whatever you need talk about anything that you want you can ask me anything about anything and that'll be another perk and then we also have the monthly cybersecurity administration automation so this is going from system administration and now it's going into sysec administration so these are things that are now on the blue team side of things the log analysis side of things all of the activities that a cybersecurity admin is doing repetitively that there's going to be a python automation created ready to go out of the box and it includes obviously the source code, the documentation and a video that goes into it. And this is now graduating from a beginner level code 
to an intermediate level code and again this you could use this for anything you could use it for yourself you could use it for the jobs that you go on and I'm actually really proud of these things like the the automations is a very big deal for me because it I know that it helps so much in my own life that I was like okay you know what I feel like this would be actually be very useful if we started giving it to all of our members so we already had the sysadmin uh, python automations and now we have the monthly cybersecurity administrator python autom automations that are included as well and finally we have the merchandise discounts that come in at cyber guardian which is a 10% discount on all the merchandise in the hackaholics anonymous store and the store is going to be pretty badass too so i'm i'm really excited about all the merch that's about to drop as well so really really excited about all of these things that are happening and uh, i honestly i just hope that you guys enjoy it as much as i am and last but definitely not least is going to be our Cyber Master tier, which is everything from Cyber Guardian, everything from Cyber Agent, Cyber Supporter, all of those things. And this stacks on top of all of those things. And the early access now bumps up to a week instead of 72 hours. You get a week advanced early access to all of the content. There's gonna be members only live streams with Q&A where this is a weekly exclusive. So previously it was a monthly exclusive live stream where it was happening for the Cyber Guardian but this is going to be a weekly exclu exclusive live stream where you can literally ask me anything that you want about anything and because of the tier being the higher of the all of the tiers i do expect that these communities or these members are going to be a little bit less in number so it'll be much more intimate live streams and we'll get a chance to really have deep conversations about a lot of the specific topics and we can go really deep into whatever conversation or whatever topic that you want to have so this is one of the reasons why it's tiered as high as it is and of course we have the monthly pen testing python automations and so the pen testing side of things is now going into offensive security so cybersecurity admin was the defensive they were on the blue team and the pen tester is now on the red team this is the offensive security side of auto automations and these are advanced automations so this is things like web vulnerability assessments these are port scanners there are a lot of great advanced uh, python automations that actually help with penetration testing and ethical hacking and of course you get the source code you get the documentations you get the videos that accompanies it and this this is kind of my my pride and joy the pen testing stuff the pen testing python stuff is absolutely i'm so happy that these things work the way that they do and of course all of these work for windows as well as mac os there's going to be a folder where you get access to all the windows as well as all the mac os so in case uh, mac os and linux because those two are very similar languages so in case you know the computer at work is windows and the computer at home is linux for whatever reason you get access to both versions of the source code so that you can do exactly what the intended script wants to do on all types of machines and finally we get merchandise discounts that go up to 20 percent on everything that comes in the hackaholics anonymous store and that is the cyber master tier which brings us to our call to action i know i threw a lot at you and ultimately this is coming to a very wrapping point because i didn't want this video to be very long because it's going to be integrated with all of our other content and things like that so if you want to show appreciation for this channel and everything that constantly comes out and if you want to show appreciation to me uh, if you want to excel your learning and your career, if you want to get specialized content, if you want to get badass automations, and if you want to team up for bug bounties and make real money, then I very much encourage you to join the Hackaholics Anonymous community today. Uh, this is something that I'm very, very excited about and I worked very hard on establishing it and building the automations and making sure that there is real value that's being exchanged for it. And I really don't care what level you come in because even from the supporter to the cyber master, I really truly appreciate every single person that becomes a member of our community. And I'm gonna do everything that I possibly can to make sure that this community is very valuable for you and you get some serious, serious perks out of it. And you'll see, you'll see as you come on, everything from the cheat sheets, to the manuals, to the specialized videos, to the automations, to uh, the bug bounty programs, and all the stuff that we're gonna be doing together, uh, you will see that it's going to be an amazing membership community to be a part of. And my goal, as I said from the very, very beginning of this whole thing, my goal is to make this the premier community for all of the security professionals, hackers, 
and everybody who just wants to be in cybersecurity. That's all genuinely the goal for this. So uh, I very much look forward to seeing you in our membership program. If you can make it, that would be amazing. If not, I very much encourage that you subscribe and like and turn on notification bell, drop a comment, all that stuff just to help us grow this community and make this channel even better than it actually is. Okay, let's talk about regular expressions. So first and foremost, what are regular expressions? Uh, and regex is a common uh, term that you'll see for it. And RE is the Python library that you'll end up using if you actually choose to use Python uh, for your coding, which I love to do because it's a very, very easy language to learn. And it's very, very powerful, very useful. Um, regex or regular expressions are patterns of text that you define to search documents and match exactly what you're looking for. So essentially what you're going to use regex for is to search for patterns. Uh, rarely ever are you going to look for the actual word itself or the phrase itself because you could literally just search for the word or the phrase itself. So what you're going to use regex for is to search for patterns. And the reason why you should learn how to use this, even if you don't need them sooner or later, uh, it's a great tool that you need to know how to use. In my humble opinion, everybody should know how to use this. And in the last several videos that came out on this channel, so the last few videos prior to this very video, we had to use regular expressions. And the deeper that we go into SOC level two and using SIM tools or IDS tools or doing log analysis, we just use regex and regular expressions more and more frequently because they're very, very useful to search for patterns inside of log files or inside of uh, the various tools that we use. So it makes you much more capable in capture the flag exercises and potentially a better developer. I would not say potentially, I would say it makes you definitely a better developer uh, if that's a goal that you actually have. And if you spend a little bit of time learning it, you save a lot of time in the long run by learning how to use it. So um, if you are lazy, this is a lazy person's tutorial. So it's, uh, it's not really much reading going on. We do a lot of doing and the way that we do in this particular video is we use uh, one of several tools to just test the different patterns that we're going to be running. So if you're doing anything inside of a Unix machine, which is a Mac operating system or a Linux machine, you can use egrep and to uh, dedicate which pattern. Let me see if I can zoom in here. You would use egrep and then you would do the uh, pattern uh, and you'll see all the various patterns that we can use and just the name of the file to see what matches and what doesn't. You can also use regexer which is a website that allows you to just type in your regex patterns and search through text for it or regex 101, which is the tool that I'm going to be using. Both of these are going to essentially have the same uh, capabilities. I just like the layout of regex 101 uh, because we can put our test string in the middle right here. We can put our pattern at the top right here and on the side, it'll give us the explanation of all the patterns that we have as well as the match information. So any matches that have been made. So, this is going to be the tool that I'm going to be using. It's regx101.com. And uh, that's pretty much it for all we need to know for the introduction of this room. So the very first thing that you need to know about regex is the care sets or char sets, however you want to pronounce it, but essentially character sets. So let's talk about that. Okay, when you search for a specific string in a file or a block of text, you always or you can always uh, use grep. So grep is one of the uh, most famously known tools for system analysts and system administrators, uh, security analysts, and it allows you to search through a file for a specific string. So for example, you would do grep, and then inside of the quote, you would put your string that you're searching for or the word that you want to search for. And then right after that, you would put the path to the file and it just searches for that inside of the file. But what happens if you want to search for a pattern of text? And this is where character sets come in. So you could be looking for a word that starts with a specific letter or any words that end with numbers. And this is where this thing is very powerful. So um, both of the problems, the aforementioned problems, I love that word. Both of those problems can be solved using character sets. A character set or car set, char set. I don't know how to pronounce that. I guess I'm going to call it char set. I, just, I could, I'm just going to call it character set, whatever. Uh, it's defined by enclosing square brackets. 
and then the characters will be inside of those brackets or the range of characters that you want to match would be inside of those brackets. And then regex will find every occurrence of that pattern that you've defined inside the file or the text that you're searching. So for example, right here, let's zoom in a little bit. We got ABC inside of the bracket and it will match A, B and C every occurrence of that letter. Uh, ABC followed by two Z's will match a z z b z z and c z z you kind of notice the pattern already right so it's like whatever's inside of the brackets is going to be searched for individually and then anything that you put outside of those brackets will be matched literally so it'll be as <laughs> or b z z or c z z right you can also do a dash in between that thing to uh mod define ranges so a to C, so we can also refer to the dash as the word to TO. So A to C, ZZ will result the same thing right here, right here. And then you could do A to E, ZZ, and it will do the same thing. And then you can combine ranges together. So it could be A to C, X to Z, and then ZZ. And it will match A, Z, Z, B, Z, Z, C, Z, Z, and then X, Z, Z, Y, Z, 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 right? So most notably, this is what you'll see very frequently, um, and you actually will see this a lot. So it's A to Z, lowercase, and then A to Z, uppercase, and it'll match any single letter, lowercase or uppercase, and you can do that for numbers as well. So you can have the file, and then one, two, three, so one dash three, and it will look for a file, literal uh, search for the word file, and then it'll have the numbers behind it. So file one, file two, file three, right? So, so far you kind of get the patterns of this. It should be fairly simple. So now we're going to add a new character here. And that is a character that will help us exclude characters from our character set. And that is the, I would call it the upward arrow symbol. So the, it's also called the hat symbol. Um, hat is probably easier than saying upward arrow every time. So the hat symbol, which is this piece right here, uh, and excludes whatever you have, um, and it includes everything else. So for example, uh, the hat K inside of the brackets and an ING. So it will search for literally everything that has the literal uh, text ING, but it'll exclude K. So it won't show the word king, for example but it will show ring, sing, or dollar ing. It just won't show kink, right? And then you can do that to a range as well. So you could do hat A through C and then at. So it won't show at, it won't show bat, it won't show cat. However, it will show fat, it'll show hat. It just won't show the letters that are included in this range, right? So. We don't want to confuse strings with character sets. It's very important to understand that because a string, it could be a sentence. A string could be a word. It could be a sentence. It could be a combination of sentences. So strings are not character sets. Character sets, which would be ABC in this particular example, will match anything that that has the string ABC, but it also matches CBA. It also matches CA. So it doesn't match the string specifically, but rather every occurrence of that characters, uh, the specified characters in that string. So of these characters, and that's what is very important to understand about character sets. When specifying character sets, you should type the letters in the same order they appear in the question to avoid typing something correct that is not the right answer. Right. So uh, they're talking about the questions that we're going to get asked later on. And then we have note number three, which is answering some of these questions is going to be tricky. Oftentimes, there are many different patterns that match specific strings. That means, as stated in the previous note, that you may find a proper solution that isn't the right answer for this room because there, there can only be one answer. So they're looking for a specific format of the answer. And you'll notice as you get more well versed with regular expressions that there are multiple ways to climb the tree, so to speak. So the right answer is typically the most efficient regex for that question. Uh, efficient and in, in this context means two things. Number one, be specific. So you could match any character from A to C using A to Z, obviously, but now you're including everything after C as well. So D, E, F, G, etc. 
But if the question only requires that you match characters from A to C, then you should use A to C, right? Not A to Z. Don't be too specific, uh, which would be the contrast, the opposite of this, right? So it says, uh, if a question requires that you match A, C, F, R, S, Z at that point, the expression that matches those specific characters would get longer and more complicated. So it would make more sense to use A to Z for that particular example, because you're going A all the way to Z, right? You're not necessarily going to go A dash C and then F dash R S dash Z. Does that make sense? Because this would be short, simple, and it covers all of these things. And finally, uh, there cannot be a single correct solution. Um, if you've tested your solution and it works, you can take a break and come back to it later or ask for a hint in Discord, but try not to get frustrated. So that's kind of the final note that they've given us. So that's essentially what we have for the task character sets. And now we can just kind of jump into answering these questions here. So hopefully these patterns made sense for you so far. It's basically everything inside of brackets as you've uh, established. And later on, we'll probably go into parentheses and we'll go into forward and backslashes as well. But right now, we're just talking about square brackets. And you can see how you can define specific characters or you can define ranges of characters the way that they've outlined right here. And then what it would do if you included specific strings or specific words before or after the brackets to match literal words or literal strings, right? So that's what we got so far. So now... The question here says, um, match all of the following characters, C, O, and G. So what would you do to match that? There we go. So we have cog, C, O, G, and you put that inside of the square brackets. So very, very simple. Um, not overthinking it, right? So now match all of the following words, cat, fat, and hat. So what would that look like? There we go. So very simple, right? CFH, and then you just put at outside of the brackets because we want to match that literally. The only thing that we're changing are the first letters and very simple like that. So now match all of the following words, cat, cat, hat, hat. So uh, capital C and then a capital H as well as a lowercase C and a lowercase H. So what would that look like? I'm pretty sure you already guessed it, right? So it's it really isn't complicated. Once you kind of understand the patterns, it's really not complicated to get good at regular expressions. So we did capital C, lowercase c, capital H, lowercase h, and then we put at outside of the brackets, and lo and behold, that was the right answer. So now, match all the following file names, file one, file two, file three, file four, file five, file seven, and file nine. So you have two sets of files, right? So you have a capital file and then you have a lowercase file and then you have a variation of numbers that go into it. Okay, so there you go. So we have the first letter variation. So it's a capital F and a lowercase f, right? But everything else in this word is literally the same. So every single one has I-L-E in the middle of it. So that part stays outside of the brackets. So we have the first set of brackets that has the capital F lowercase f, and then that creates the variations of the word file for us. And then the second set of brackets has the numbers one through nine, because we have one, two, three, four, five, and then seven and nine. So it's easy enough to just say one to nine, and then have our capital F lowercase f, and that makes our very simple pattern. So. Uh, finally, we have match all the file names of question four. So uh, this thing right here, right? So one, two, three, four, yeah. So match all the file names of question four except file seven using the hat symbol. So how are you gonna do that? Okay, there it is. So I actually had a little bit of a hard time finding the hat symbol, but the hat symbol um, I think it's like this on all the keyboards. It would be the number six in the, the row of numbers that's above all the uh, letters on your keyboard. And you would hold down shift and then press the number six and then you have the hat symbol. So very similar to the first portion of this pattern, um, except now we just want to exclude the number seven and show everything else um, other than the number seven. 
So we just excluded the number seven by using hat seven inside of the brackets. And just like that, you got all of your answers. So pretty simple, uh, pretty straightforward. As long as you understand the patterns, it should be very easy to understand how to use regular expressions. So uh, let's go a little bit deeper into it with uh, wild cards and optional characters now. All right, the wild card that is used to match any single character except the line break is the dot. It matches any single character except the line break, okay? So just keep that in mind. That means that A dot C will match A A C, A B C, A zero C, A exclamation C, and so on. So it matches literally anything except the line break. And you can also uh, set a character as optional in your pattern using the question mark. That means that ABC question mark will match AB, ABC, since the C itself is optional, right? So if you wanna search for a literal dot, you have to escape it using the backslash, the reverse slash. So this is something that you'll see very frequently as well. So if you wanna use a literal item, so a literal question mark, for example, you would have to escape that doing a backslash and then the question mark so that you can actually search for that question mark. So A dot C will match A dot C, but the actual pattern itself is gonna look like this, A backslash dot C so that you can escape that dot and then have it actually be the, the dot itself, right? So uh, we'll match A dot C, but also A, B, C, A at C, so on and so forth. But when you actually do this, it'll just match A dot C as we already established. So, now we're going to match all of the following words right here. So we want cat, fat, hat, rat, and that one should be fairly simple. So I'm just gonna do it real quick. And there is that. So you do dot at, and it'll just match everything for you. Um, the next one is gonna be match all of the following words, uh, cats and, or excuse me, cat, and then cats, right? So you wanna match that whole thing. And there we go, because we want the S at the very end to be included or not be included. And then obviously we want to alternate with a capital C and a lowercase c. So we have to put the capital, key, capital C, lowercase c inside of our brackets. And then we have ats. And then we have the question mark at the very end, just so we can either include or not include this S at the very end right here. So the next one is going to be matching the domain name cat XYZ. And so you should already know what that's like. So cat dot X, Y, Z like that, um, because we need to escape the dot character and make sure that we actually match a literal dot. So we do the backslash dot. And now the next one is going to be match all the following domain names, cat X, Y, Z, cats X, Y, Z, hats X, Y, Z. So let's see what we can come up with. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. For a second, I had to think about it. But yes, so we have the CH in the brackets because we're going between cat and hat, right? And then the at part is for sure going to be included in everything. The character S is either included or not included because we have cat and then we have cats as well as hats. But then we need to have a literal dot, which was what we did exactly in this pattern. And then the XYZ is literal as well. So the backslash dot will give us the specific dot character the question mark will either include or not include the letter s um, and then c and h will be inside of brackets because we need to alternate between c and h there we go uh, finally or not finally second to last here we have match every four letter string that doesn't end in any letter from n to z so match every four letter letter string that doesn't end in any letter from N to Z. The question was a little bit confusing, a little bit tricky. So we want four letters and any four letter string. So we have three dots representing the first three letters and it could be anything because a dot represents everything except a new line, right? And then inside of the brackets for the last letter, we just wanna exclude N to Z right? So we, it, it doesn't end in any letter from N to Z. So you use the hat and then you do N to Z to exclude those letters. And then the dots at the very beginning will end up matching basically every kind of four letter string, as long as it doesn't end in N to Z. So finally, 
we have bats, bats, or excuse me, bat, bats, hat, hats, but not rat or rats. And then obviously they want us to use the hat symbol. So how would you create this particular thing? Okay, there it is. So rat, you don't want the rat to be included or rats to be included. So we want to make sure that we just exclude rats, but then it can essentially be anything else. So when you do the hat R, it's saying that find every character or every letter other than R. So it's still going to search for all the variations and all the different characters. It just won't include R. So by using the hat, you're implying that you want it to search for all of the different characters except the character R. And then of course at the very end we put the question mark because the S may or may not be included and that's it. That's how you find it. So it's actually very, the, the initial pattern that I had in my head was going to be a little bit more complicated than this, but I think this is actually probably the most simple way that we can look for these things without creating like this crazy regex pattern. So there you go. Rats or excuse me, bat, bats, hat, hats, cat cats but not rat rats right there we go um, and we can now move on to meta characters and repetitions so this is where it becomes pretty powerful it, it's kind of confusing but once you get the pattern again once you understand the pattern it becomes really really powerful so let's go into meta characters and repetitions okay so let's say that you want to match a big set of characters and let's say you don't want to write this crazy long uh, pattern to try to match a website for example or if you want to match a large number of digits for example um, how do you do that and this is where really the power of regex is kind of shines and it really comes in so um, if you want to match characters or excuse me digits right if you want to match digits and you don't know what the digit is, you just know that it's a digit, right? So you do backslash D, because in this particular case, if you didn't do the backslash, it would just match for the letter D, right? So you wanna do backslash D for digits, and it has to be lowercase to be able to match a digit, so like the number nine. If you do a backslash capital D, it'll do non-digits, so any non-digit, like the capital letter A or the at symbol. If you do backslash W, lowercase w, it matches an alphanumeric character. So it could actually match a letter or it could match a number. If you do backslash capital W, it matches a non-alphanumeric character like the special character. So the exclamation mark or the uh, hashtag sign, the number sign. Uh, you do backslash S and it'll match a white space character. So basically a space. So this would be a space right? The, that would be a space. The stuff between words, that's a space. And sometimes you need to actually put that inside of your pattern because if you're looking for multiple words and you just don't know how long each word is, but you know that it's two words inside the pattern and then you want to make sure that you include both of the words and you know that it's separated by space. So you have to include that. So spaces, tabs, and line breaks are all matched by backslash lowercase s. If you do a backslash uppercase s, means it matches everything else. So alphanumeric characters and symbols. So this is basically everything other than a backslash, or excuse me, everything other than a space or a tab or a line break is done by an uppercase s. So uppercase s would actually do the job of w and d combined the lowercase w and the lowercase d it will do that combined right so one big thing to understand is that underscores are included in the w meta character so backslash w and not in the backslash uppercase w that means that the uh, lowercase w will match every character inside of this word which is test underscore file which is a very common format for naming log files or various types of files that there's an underscore included in it so if you do this simply 
uh, it will match every character. Actually, you need to also include the plus sign after this because it's only going to match a single letter if you just do backslash W. But if you do backslash W plus, it will match the entire phrase right here, assuming that you already know what begins bef uh, before it and what ends after it so that you can try to find this piece specifically, right? Um, we want a pattern sometimes or more often than not, we want a pattern that matches many characters of a single type in a row, and we can do that with repetition. So for example, if you do the squiggly brackets, not the square brackets, if you do squiggly brackets, that means you want two repetitions the of the preceding character or letter, right? So it could be a meta character or it could be a character set, but you want two repetitions of it. So it's two times in a row. That means that Z, two inside of the squigglies will match this exactly because you want two repetitions of the letter Z. So here's a reference for the stuff that you kind of want and how many times you want something to match for you. So if you do 12 inside of the squiggly brackets, it'll match exactly 12 times. If you do one comma five, it'll match one, two, three, four, and five times. So everything between that range right there. If you do two comma nothing, it'll be anything more than two, so two or more times. If you do asterisk, it'll be zero or more times because asterisk is another one of those wild card characters. And if you do plus sign, it'll be one or more times. So for example, if we wanted to match this word or this phrase right here, this will be W plus. So backslash W plus will actually find this entire thing for you because it's one or more times, right? That's the key about this. So knowing all of this, knowing that we now have meta characters and we have repetitions in mind, let's try to find the specific patterns here. So the first one is matching the following word cats with four S's at the end of it. So how would you find that? If you guessed cats and then squiggly bracket four, then you got it right. So pretty simple. Now, the following words using the uh, asterisk sign. So cat, cats, and cats with three S's. So you want that entire thing. So what can you f come up with? See, there you go. So the, f the big part of this was just f accounting for the uppercase and lowercase. And then they already tell you, use the asterisk sign. So ats, and then just put the asterisk at the end of it. And that'll match... 1s, 2s's, 3s's, 5s's, 9s's, 1000s's, that'll match, right? So you just got to account for the uppercase and the lowercase and you're all good. So now next one is match all the following sentences using the plus sign. So regex go brr, regex go brr with like multiple r's in it. So you want that exact thing. So how would you do that? There you go. Something to keep in mind, it's rarely included like this. So there's usually a forward slash before all of this. So just to kind of give you an example, it would be like this, right? It would typically look like that. So it's rare that you'll end up doing um, just the phrase or the pattern without the full thing. And actually, we can even try this out. So let's say that we want to go match all of these, right? So I'm going to go copy this. I'm going to go inside of this. I'll put the test string right here. And so if I do regex, and by the way, you can see right here, right? Look, there's a, a forward slash already included at the beginning of these things. So if those things weren't included, it may not work for us. So if we do regex go burr, and then we do our plus sign, now it includes both of them, right? And so you have the match information right here. So it shows you regex go burr, regex go burr multiple times. And then it explains it for you right here. I should have probably been doing this <laughs> from the very beginning just to kind of show you how all of these things work out. And I'll probably do like a couple of examples at the end of this just to show it to you. But it explains it, right? So regex go burr. And then the big piece right here is the plus sign right here. And it matches the characters regex go b literally because it's all case sensitive. So it matches this entire thing literally because we didn't have any other brackets around them or anything like that. But R matches this with the index 114, 72, or 162, literally case sensitive, and the plus matches the previous token one and unlimited times as many times as possible. So if I went over here and did another version of this where I did regex go burr, it would also include that. 
it doesn't matter how many R's you put in there because the plus sign accounts for unlimited number of repetitions of that, okay? So that's how that works. But the big thing that I wanted to show you was that when you're doing this, when you're writing code or when you're writing queries, you really need to understand that there needs to be the, the um, forward slashes at the beginning and the end of your pattern. Otherwise, it's gonna be very tough to embed it inside of all of the code that you have so that your code recognizes that you just put regex patterns inside of it or regex patterns inside of your query when you're going through Splunk or Elastic Stack or something like that. The forward slashes at the beginning and the end of the entire pattern imply that this is a regex pattern. And if you don't do that, it, the system and the language isn't gonna know what you're doing. So the next one is match all the following file names, AB0001, BB0000, or quadruple zeros, ABC, 1000, CBA, uh, 0110, and C, four zeros. So don't use a meta character, okay? So this one's a little bit tougher for us. So how do we do this? How would you do this? To actually make this work, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take this here, and I'm gonna copy it and we're gonna go inside of our regex builder right here and we'll paste it as our text pattern. And so now we can actually kind of mess around with this pattern right here to see how we can create it. And this, this actually I think is very helpful if we do it from like this from now on. So we'll do the open brackets ABC because we learned from the very beginning that you can just make it match everything. So it'll highlight all the ones that it's actually matching for you, right? It highlights CBA as well and it highlights C by itself. So that matches everything. Now we want to do repetitions of any of these characters one, two, three, uh, one through three times. So this has two times, this has two times, this has three times, this has three times, and this has one time. So you want to match at least one through three times of whatever those characters are. And now all of a sudden you see that all of these things are being highlighted. So perfect. So you have all of that. And now we want to do the the rest of this which is relatively simple so we have zeros and we have ones that's basically all we have for the the numbers that we have so zero and one would end up being those but those also need to be repeated a certain number of times in this particular case is going to be four times because we can see that there are four repetitions of numbers doesn't it doesn't matter what the pattern of the numbers are you can just see that there are four repetitions of the numbers so first you want to identify the characters that we want to include and it's a b or c as we can tell it's just different variations this is cba this is abc this is ab etc and the characters at the beginning the letters at the beginning are repeated either one two or three times and then we have the numbers zero and one as the digits that we have and then those are always repeated four times so we can tell that that's the pattern overall of all of these items that we're looking for so we uh, write that and now we see that all of these things are highlighted meaning they're all available and so if we went to the side right here we have all of the matches match one match two match three and match four right so that's going to be our pattern so we're going to copy this pattern i'm just going to bring it here and i'm going to paste it here and that should be there we go that's our answer all right so next one, match all the following file names, file 01, file 2, and then file 12, file 20, file 99. Interesting. So I know from the beginning, I have a capital F, then I have a lowercase f, so I know that's going to be in there. I know there's going to be uh, 0, 1, 2, and then 99. <laughs> so that's also important. So let's take this entire string. We're going to go to our regex builder. We're going to paste the string right here. And then we'll start this from scratch and let's see what we can build right here. So we know that we need to have the capital F and the lowercase f. There you go. And all of them are now highlighted. So it's very useful for us. So we know that we're going to have file. So F-I-L-E. There you go. That's all good as well. Um, I want to make sure that we have the digits included. So any digit essentially in this case now we can use one of those meta characters or those delimiters. So we can do a backslash D and now it'll highlight any digit, right? Any number that we want. And we can tell from the pattern that it's either repeated one time or two times. So the pattern is two times. So we could do this, or excuse me, squiggly, and then one to two, and then squiggly again. So one time or two times, or even if I did this, it would still include it, or no, 
actually it doesn't so okay so lesson learned so it doesn't work when it's empty comma two it actually has to have a one at the beginning of it and then you could do one unlimited times and it will show everything so it could be one comma nothing else after the fact or in this particular case since we know that it's going to be two characters we could just do that so it could be one of either one comma nothing or one comma two and that will highlight all of our results and then if we go back here we can tell that we have all the results matched so that's all good as well so let's go do that and paste that here there we go very good now much match all the following uh folder names we have cali tools and then we have cali uh tools with a tab so this one has a space in the middle and this one has a tab in the middle and this is kind of a gimme but here i'll just go and put it inside of this thing as well we should make a habit of this and so we can go here and we'll do cali backslash s tools and now we have that whole thing if I do backslash S plus, it'll have both of those things. So in this particular case, I think they wanted us to just use backslash S. I don't know if they wanted to use the plus. I'll include the plus just in case. But we can tell that there's multiple spaces here and there's only a single space here. So the plus sign allows us to have as many very as many repetitions of this between these two words, between Cali and tools. So let's try it with the plus sign and see if that's actually the case. Let's see if that's how it works. So let me zoom back out. Here we go. And we're going to go here, enter that. Oh, that was it. Okay, yeah. So you do want to include the plus sign in it because it could necessarily be either multiple spaces or it could be tab. When you do tab, it gives you like a big space between the words, but it technically counts as one uh, space or like empty portion. <laughs> Um, but so we had space multiple times and that's what matched this one. Um, so now here's the next one, match all the following file names, notes with a squiggly right here and then stuff at get the fuck out <laughs> GTFOB, get the fuck out, bitch. Excuse my French, golly. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious and then they put lmao at the end of it because they knew that i was going to read this like right here so okay so notes stuff gtfob lma double o asterisk uh uh not asterisk what is this exclamation there we go so that's this one is a little bit because there are so many variations right so we're going to go put this here but it's not that complicated actually when you think about it so what would be the pattern for this, right? So we want, uh, let's see, we can see that there is uh, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five characters here, there's five characters here, there's five characters here, and then there's five characters here. So we can tell that it's five characters. So it could be backslash W, and then we'll be five right there. So come on, there you go. Backslash W, and then inside of the squiggly brackets, you put five, and now all of a sudden, all of our words are highlighted so the next thing that we want is to match for any other character that's not a uh, alphanumeric character so what we're talking about is special character so it's a backslash capital w and now all of a sudden the whole thing is highlighted and so if i go over here now i have all of the words matched so it's a short pattern you see how a short pattern it's not very long as far as like the specific characters and everything that you're using but it now matches everything here. And it could have even been this. I could have even done this backslash W uh, plus sign, and it would have still matched all of those things because I can make the pattern even shorter and match anything. So it could be notes like this, and it would still include the whole thing. It would read the whole thing. But because we actually had special, uh, let's see. So if we do five, because I, they said be specific, right? So that's the reason why I'm going to include that five. And also just to kind of, they give it away here by putting this like in the, in the answer format, they kind of gave us the format that they want us to include. That's why the squiggly sign is kind of a big deal. So we can put the squiggly sign, but a shorter version of this would just be backslash W plus sign and then backslash capital W and it would match all of these things, right? So now here we go, match the string in quotes, 
use the asterisk sign and uh, lowercase uppercase meta character so this is the string in quotes right here so we have the full thing right here I'm gonna take this full thing and we're gonna go paste it uh, on our space right here on our text string and they wanted us to use the uppercase and lowercase so if you remember the uppercase matches anything right anything other than space so it matches alpha numeric special characters all of that stuff okay so it matches that and we need to make sure that we include all of those things so if i do this thing then now it turns so notice this right so notice how um, there is a low, uh, light blue, dark blue, light blue, light, dark blue. That means it's matching. Uh, let me zoom back in here. It's matching all of these things individually, right? But if I want to match this whole block, then I could do an asterisk. And now it matches this entire block as one thing. And then this entire block as another thing. But we're still missing our spaces in the middle right here. So we could do that. And we could do backslash S lowercase s to match that and then do an asterisk which will go and do that entire thing so but now you can see that there's two selections whereas this thing is one big selection because it's counting the full thing which is this block counts that entire section of alphanumeric characters and then this piece right here only counts this uh, spaces right here so this pattern only matches this chunk right here okay it doesn't match this chunk because this doesn't have a bunch of spaces behind it. So to be able to match the whole thing, to be able to get the entire string, we need to repeat that first part, which is that S, and then put another asterisk. And now this whole thing is one result that we just found, right? So it's backslash S, capital S, asterisk, and gets this entire piece for us. Backslash lowercase s asterisk gets all of these spaces and then another uppercase asterisk will get this entire block right here. So now you have the full thing as one match, right? So you see right here, one giant match is the full thing. And interestingly enough, there's a second match right here that it says empty string, which I guess would be kind of like the, the piece after this. I guess that was like copy pasted when I uh, triple clicked on here to take this whole thing. I think it copy pasted an extra thing. So let's see, all right, there we go. That's it. So they're asking to use the asterisk sign, lowercase s and uppercase meta characters. And we got it. Very, very simple. Like super, super simple pattern, but it matches this entire thing for you. Isn't that crazy? Um, so now here we go. Match every nine character string. So you know that you want it to be nine inside of that squiggly bracket. And you already can tell, right? With letters and numbers and symbols. So that's going to be uh what it's going to be a uh uppercase s right so any nine characters saying for this i don't have anything to put inside of this match right here but we can kind of build it out right so what we want to do is we want to exclude the uh exclamation sign so we're going to do backslash capital s and we're going to put inside of the squiggly a nine because it's going to be nine characters and then we're going to put inside of the square brackets a hat and an asterisk. Uh, I keep calling it asterisk, but exclamation. And then we put we close that uh, with the square bracket. So this is what we don't want to include. So that's it doesn't end in a sign in an exclamation sign. So we don't want to include that. But then it needs to be any nine character with letters, numbers and symbols, which is going to be our capital S. And that's going to be our pattern. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you know what? This is what I missed. So this would actually end up giving me a 10 character string because I did this multiplied by nine. And then this last piece also is going to bring another search, another character up. It's just not going to include the exclamation. So this is actually going to be one. And then this will end up being nine. So this actually needs to be eight. And then the whole thing is going to give us a nine. There you go. That's how you get it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, very good. See, I, I'm getting my skills fine tuned here as well. Uh, so here we go match all these file names using the plus symbol. And these are all of our file names and it includes this little dot at the beginning. So dot bash dot unnecessarily long file name and note one. So we're going to include all of this and I'm just going to remove and from the full thing because I don't think that's supposed to be in there. So I'm going to paste this here. I'm going to remove and. 
so there we go um, and there is a space in front of this and there's a space right here I don't think the space is necessary because we just want to find the file names so the piece right here is going to be um, whether or not we want to include that uh, dot right so first and foremost you notice that one of them doesn't have a dot at the beginning of it so note doesn't have a dot at the beginning of it but these two actually have a dot at the beginning so we learned that we got to do a backslash to include the dot because that's uh, one of those things that finds a bunch of things so we have to escape that character first and include the dot but it may or may not include a dot so you put a question mark to maybe or maybe it doesn't include a dot and then we were going to use the W for any alphanumeric character. And then we're going to add the plus because we don't know how many, uh, you know, characters are going to be there. So we just want to go from one to unlimited or zero to unlimited. And all of a sudden, this pattern right here matches everything. Notice how it actually has three matches for us. And we have that, that, as well as that. And this little pattern right here matched even this unnecessarily long file name, note one and bash RC. So there you go, just like that. And let's zoom back out and go here, paste this bad boy, and there it is. I love this stuff so much. I love it when things work, when code works or when patterns and things like this work. It is so freaking exciting to me. I don't know why, like I, I genuinely feel like I'm such a big nerd when I get excited over these things. I'm like, oh my God, I'm such a nerd. Okay, cool, finally, we have the last piece, which is uh, the starts with ends with groups and either or so starts with ends with and either or is what we're going to be learning now okay so grouping is really important and then declaring that you want to start with something or end with something is also very important so this is how you go through a really large file with a lot of data and find exactly the specific pattern of information that you're looking for so um, sometimes it's very useful to specify uh, what you search by a pattern in the beginning or the end of a line. So you do that with the hat character. So the hat character previously, if you remember, was included to exclude something. So you would use the hat character inside of square brackets to say that I want to exclude this particular character. The dollar sign we haven't used before. And that means that the line ends with a certain type of character. So, for example, uh, if you want something that starts with ABC, you can use the hat character ABC as long as it's not in the square brackets. Right here, they're saying it. The hat symbol is used to exclude a character set when enclosed in square brackets. But when it's not, it's used to specify the beginning of a word. So you say you want to start something that starts with ABC and then you put the hat character ABC. If you want to search for something that ends with XYZ, you can use XYZ and then you put the dollar sign at the end of it, right? So that ends with XYZ. This one starts with ABC, for example. So the uh, we can define groups using parentheses and this is a very useful tool as well. So you can create a group of uh, character sets or patterns by putting them inside of a parentheses and this can be used in a lot of different ways uh, it's not in the scope of this tutorial but if you actually go watch some of the previous videos that we used especially some of the the Splunk videos the last few Splunk videos that we did we had to use these groups so um, it's very very useful and I will try to find some ways that we can kind of search for it uh, search for specific phrases at the end of this thing just to make it useful for you um, but grouping is really really powerful and it, it really basically means that you can put multiple patterns inside of parentheses and that entire pattern will be grouped as one thing so for example you can use it to define an either or pattern or and also you can repeat patterns or say uh, to say or uh, we can use the the pipe right here specifically but so an either or pattern inside of a parentheses right so you say during the day or night that's what the pipe represents here um, we, let me zoom in a little bit so during the day or night and you can tell that this is a group because it's been put inside of this thing but I can also do uh, backslash W plus 
pipe backslash w plus technically that would work so let's actually go here and let's do this i'm going to take this whole thing because i do want to show you what this actually looks like when we search for it so during the day and then i'm going to copy this right here and then now we're going to go here and we're going to create our pattern so during the you see so let's zoom in so we have during the is going to be a part of it and remember this is inside of the uh the forward slashes okay just remember that part that the way that you can define that this specific thing is a regex pattern we put it inside of the forward slashes so during the and now we want to alternate between day and night so we do another space here and then we do uh the open parentheses day and then pipe night and then close parentheses and now we have that so now you can see that it includes that but i can also do this i could do w or backslash w and then plus and now all of a sudden look at that and it includes that and i could do this again i mean technically i can now just use that by itself and it'll do <laughs> during the day or during the night see how that works it's very simple and very easy the way that these patterns work actually they're super useful the way that they work so this is a group this is a group for your pattern and this is inside of the forward slashes to imply that inside of your pattern so this full thing is actually our pattern right here these two words including the spaces between them these two words are the um the literal uh, choices the literal definitions that we want and uh, I could do okay so I just added the word break after this right so um, technically you could do this right so during the day night and then just put the literal word here again which would be break and that would include the whole thing and that would match your entire pattern you can also go here and do it inside of your grouping right here right so during the day so you could also do this because you, you may not necessarily know what the word is after the fact. But if I do during the day and then use a space because there's a space right here and then do the backslash W plus, it'll match day break. And then during the night, uh, during the night session could be the second word right here. And so I could do night and then do backslash S to match the space and then backslash W plus, And now it matches night session. So this pattern right matches the space and then the thing after the fact and then this pattern matches this thing after the fact and all of this is inside a group because during the is included in both of the phrases so we want to match that literally but we just don't know what this portion right here is going to look like so you have the backslash s lowercase s to match that space right here and then the w plus backslash w plus is going to match the word that comes afterwards right so that's how you can find groups that's how you can define groups so for a repetition example the pattern no five will match the sentence no 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 right here am i zoomed in oh i was zoomed in i guess we can zoom in a little bit more so no inside of the parentheses followed by five inside of the squiggly will match this whole thing notice so let's go and check this out right so if we actually did this if i went and did no without the parentheses and i did the number five and i did this and then our word was no 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 notice how there's no actual match here right but if i had no 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 and then there were five o's at the end of it it matched that very last piece because what is it doing? It's looking for the letter O five times. So if you want to look for a word five times, then you can do the parentheses because we want to group those characters together. So now that you've grouped the characters, no, 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 five times, uh, or the, excuse me, the character NO. Now that you've grouped NO together and you're looking for five different uh, instances of it, it's going to actually show you this entire block right here because it has no, 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 five times. Now, this piece right here isn't included in it because only this portion matches this specific pattern. Does that make sense? Now, if I did this, for example, and look at that, and then I did O, and then I did 
uh, this piece right here, excuse me, there you go, now that matches, you see? So we have this pattern that matches the first portion of this, and then we have this pattern that matches this last piece right here because it's looking for the literal N and then the letter O as many times as possible. And if I just kept adding O's, it would still match, right? This is how the pattern works. So this is how grouping is very specific and this is how the grouping works. When you do NO inside of the parentheses, you're matching it as a group and then this specific group, NO, is going to be searched for five times. So one, two, three, four, five. You get it, you should get it by now. So that's how that works, right? So now let's answer some questions. It says match every string that starts with the password followed by any 10 characters excluding zero. So it starts with password and then any 10 characters excluding zero. So we know that the word password is going to be in it and the colon is gonna be in it. Now we're going to exclude zero. So what do you do? How do you do that? You do hat zero and then you do the close. So this is gonna be inside of the brackets, the square brackets, remember. And then now it needs to match this, uh, followed by any 10 characters excluding zero. So zero, and then this should be, I believe it should be nine like this, right? Because learning from our previous example, it's going to exclude zero, but then there's going to be something here, and then it's going to have nine repetitions of it. So let's try that. Okay, I guess not, so let's try this then. There you go, okay, so th that's weird. I don't know why they counted it. So they counted it like this, for this example, but the previous example, they didn't count this or they, yeah, uh, whatever. I'm confused now. But we, I mean, we, we got the gist of it. I know we understand what we're doing as far as the pattern is concerned. It's just that it says followed by any 10 characters excluding zero. So any 10 characters, I would assume that this is 11 characters. That's what I'm thinking, but I guess not. All right, match username in the beginning of a line, note the space. There's a space right there. So we're gonna do match username. So username and then back S. And that's our space, just like that. Very good. In the beginning of a line, oh, I see, see, I missed this thing. It added it for me. And this one says every string that starts with password, but this is in the beginning of a line. So I definitely needed to add that hat at the beginning. So I didn't add the hat at the beginning. Um, and this thing distracted me. So note the space and I was like, oh, okay, I just gotta make sure that I put the backslash S right here. But I completely forgot that I need to do that to match the beginning of the line. Okay, so match every line that doesn't start with a digit and uh, use a meta character. So th every line that doesn't start with a digit. So excluding that doesn't start with a digit like that. So no, excluding D. Lowercase d. Yeah, there. Oh, no. Uppercase d? Why is it uppercase d? No. Okay. My mistake. So this is actually my bad. My bad. My bad. So this, it's not inside of a bracket. So this uppercase, uh, this hat, it's just saying that it starts. So the line starts with anything other than a digit, which would in this case be the uppercase d. Okay. That makes sense. I thought that I was excluding the digit by doing a lowercase d, but it's not inside of the square bracket. So this is implying that the line starts, so this starts with anything other than a digit. Okay, great. Now match this string at the end of a line, EOF uh, dollar sign. So match this string at the end of a line, EOF dollar sign. So we need to actually include the dollar sign that's part of the characters and it needs to be at the end of a line. So it's going to be EOF and then since a dollar sign implies that it's the end of a line, we need to actually escape it so that we can include the dollar sign. And then we're gonna put an extra dollar sign to say this is the end of the line. There you go, okay, cool, that one worked. All right, all right, okay, cool. Match all the following sentences. I use nano and I use vim. So we know that I use is going to be here. And now we just need to make sure that we have uh, nano and vim. And so it's going to be or, right? So pipe is probably going to be involved here. Very similar to this sentence right here. So during the day or night, that's what that is. So it's going to be I use, 
and then we're going to put it inside of a thing right here and we're going to do nano pipe vim and just like that there we go cool so nano or vim very good match all the lines that start with a dollar sign followed by any single digit followed by a dollar sign followed by one or more non white space characters okay so it uh it starts with so we're gonna do this and it starts with a dollar sign so we have to escape to be able to use the dollar sign followed by any single digit which is going to be d like this followed by another dollar sign which was what we do right here uh, followed by one or more non white space characters which is going to be represented with a s with a plus yeah look at that but okay see it starts with match all lines that start with this and then it removed my starting marker god that's so annoying okay but fine the rest of it was fine i got the rest of it so we had to escape to be able to use the actual dollar sign character a single digit would just be backslash d and then another dollar sign character and then any number of non white space characters which we know is going to be represented by the capital s and finally or not finally second to last again <laughs> match every possible ipv4 ip address and use meta characters and groups this i've actually done previously inside of an exercise so this is going to be very very cool to you so every possible ipv4 ip address and use meta characters and groups so let's do that okay so in order for us to really get the gist of this because this is actually very very useful and you're probably going to have to do this for your job as a security analyst a lot um, so i went and just got a sample list of ipv4 addresses this is like i don't know if this belongs to anybody or whatever this i went to gemini literally and i was like hey can you please give me like a list of whatever and it's like here's a small list okay so here's the list of our ip addresses so what we need to do is match a few things okay so we need to know First, we know that there is either one, two, or three digits in every single instance. We know that there's a dot that's included three times in every single IP address. And then it's also, so this is basically one pattern right here. And that's one pattern, right? And that's one pattern. And then there's the final three digits or final one digit, final two digits, okay? So in order to do this, we need to first group basically the pattern that's going to find the first portion of this so we're going to do it inside of our parentheses and it's going to be a digit right and it's going to be either one through three times that's the first portion of it okay but it needs to include the dot right so that's how we include the dot and now if we enclose this all of a sudden look at this now we see that all of these things are actually highlighted but again they're highlighted separately right so this is one match this is two matches and this is three matches so it's this specific piece is actually finding these things individually it's not finding the whole ip address which is what we're trying to find so it did a good job of finding all of these individual sets right here but we need to make sure that it repeats this whole thing because it includes the dot right here so we need to repeat that full piece three times now all of a sudden we have three full matches right we have three full matches of this so this entire thing has been repeated three times it includes this full thing so there we go that's great and now it's the last three numbers right here which is going to be one through three. Oh, excuse me i'm sorry i need to use this squiggly one through three like that and now i have all of the ip addresses highlighted because this full thing so and i should just double check yeah now i have all of the ip addresses highlighted and interestingly enough, it actually includes this group for me as well. So let me see if I did something. I don't think I did anything incorrectly. I think I actually did this very correctly. Um, but for some reason, it's including this piece right here for me as a separate search as well. But it has done the full pool of the entire IP address right here. So maybe, oh, this is the group maybe. This is how, it's, it's weird but it pulled the entire IP address. So I know that the match itself has worked. So let's actually, let me see if I can try to use this as my pattern. I think that should work. Yeah, there you go. Okay, cool. I'm just curious why it pulled the group right here. This is very interesting for me. Why it pulled the group. Let me see if I can kind of read up on this. Okay, I see what happened. So this is how it identifies 
what group this portion belongs to. So this piece right here, so let's zoom in properly. This piece right here is the group and then this element right here is giving us three iterations of this group but to be able to identify the group it's saying that this group the first one ends with one zero this one ends with zero and then this one or excuse me this is one dot zero dot twenty five dot so these are the identifiers what we saw right here is the identifier so if you have a really large list or if you have a, a list of strings or something this is how the group was identified so this IP address belongs to this group right here because this pattern was our first pattern inside of the parentheses and the way that we can define what uh, IP address this pattern belongs to it would be by the last portion of that so this is what it says right here so this actually explains it it says a repeated capturing group will only capture the last iteration put a capturing group around the repeated group to capture all iterations or use a non-capturing group instead if you're not interested in the data so technically if we did this I guess so if I did this let me see if this is gonna work okay no that didn't work that actually gave me an extra group now so that gave me another group so um, so I basically what I did is I just put another parentheses a set of parentheses outside of this but that did not work oops and I just lost my results how do I go back here there we go I gotta remove that and remove that. There we go. Okay, so this pattern actually matches all of these things. I think what they meant by saying non-repeated group is if I eliminated this, and instead of doing that, I just repeated this portion right here. So if I just did this and repeated that three times, then I would be able to get an entire pattern that would be a non-repeating group that would now give me the full IP address, right? but now I have multiple groups because I did a non-repeating group. So now each one of the things that I captured because it's inside of a group is now going to show the way that it did. And technically, I guess we could fully avoid this by just removing the parentheses. I'm, now I'm just kind of spitballing and I'm like thinking out loud. So forgive me for this. So if I just removed all the parentheses, the entire pattern would literally match all the IP addresses and we would have no groups here because the groups have to be identified by something and that's what that last piece right here was that actually gave a group name. So since I just didn't include this inside of the parentheses and I just repeated it three times, then this could be the pattern. But this is longer than the previous pattern that we executed right here, right? So this is a much shorter pattern. This is technically redundant and we're repeating the same thing multiple times so I could just delete these multiple iterations right here. I could put the closing parentheses here and the opening parentheses here and then just make sure that I repeat it one, two, three times, or excuse me, three times specifically, there we go. And now I know that it's repeating this. It just has to identify each one of these groups for me now. That's why it gave us that one, zero, 25, 100, et cetera, et cetera. So, all right, now we got that out of the way. And finally, we're going to look for email addresses, which is also another thing that you're going to end up doing that is very, very useful. So what is this going to look like? It says match all these emails while also adding the username and the domain name, uh, not the top level domain in separate groups. So use the W. So it's going to say hello, try hack me username a domain. And it's going to say uh, dummy email XYZ. So we're going to copy these email addresses. We're going to go to our pattern uh, regular expression test string environment. <laughs> and so now what we want to do is we want to match multiple things here. So we know that there's going to be an at sign in every single one of these. We know there's going to be a dot in every single one of these. And the after the fact, after the dot doesn't really matter. So this could be a dot net. It could be a dot com. It could be anything. So the first piece is a W and then it's a plus sign, right? So it's going to match all of the words. If I include an at, that will be an individual like match for the at. And then it's going to be another W plus sign. Now it's going to match the full thing. Now I need to escape the dot to include the dot. And then we're going to do another W, right? To be able to include all of the, the, the following the dot coms and the dot nets and things. 
And we could do this in multiple ways. We could actually do dot co, so it could be two digits technically. It could be dot ca, it could be dot com, dot net, dot gov, dot edu, whatever. Typically, there's three of them. So you could technically do this, and it would match the full thing. You could technically do that. You could also do this because you don't know how many matches there are. So you could technically just do the plus sign. Um, so both of those would be correct. And as you can tell, it's actually pulling the data for us anyways. So that's all right. And it's pulling the email addresses fully for us anyways. So I'm going to just include this the way that it is. See if this is actually your correct answer. I think it might be. And it's not the correct answer that they want. So it says, oh, not the top level domain. So not the top level domain. So this actually could just be .com. Oh, that's not even right either. I wonder why that's right. Or let's see. So let's see. Match while da 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 and separate groups. Okay, so my bad. So it needs to be separate groups. So we need to actually put these in groups. So this is going to be group number one. And it's going to look like that. And then we're going to separate it by the at. And then that's going to be group number two. And it's going to look like that. And then there's the dot. And then there's the com not including. There we go. Okay, so these are our groups right here. I don't know why we would do that, but whatever. So I guess technically, because you know you want to be able to pull this information later, and it's easier if you actually have the groups. So if I go here and actually turn these into groups, you'll see what the results on the right hand side. Or let me just copy this full thing. So if I go here and just paste this here. So again, it tracks everything for us. But now we have groups, right? So hello, username, dummy email is our first group, first set of groups. And then at try hack me is the actual domain. And then we have the top level domain, which is the dot com. And if we go over here, you'll see that group one for this match is hello. Group two is try hack me right here and right there. And then for match two, the group one is username and then domain. So that's actually I can I can see why that's more useful. And it's probably better, especially if you're trying to uh, scrape data and parse the data easily to try to find people's usernames as well as the domain names. So I can see why we would want to separate them in groups. But that's it. That was literally the last task here. And we really got a chance to mess around with groups and kind of really understand those. So the examples of the grouping was very useful. I don't have to create more examples of it for you. So hopefully you understand now what these patterns are like. We were able to expand on regular expressions a lot. We went from the very, very beginning which we're just understanding character sets, so sets of characters, and it's all included inside of the square brackets, and then you can do identify ranges, and then there was a way that you can exclude them by using the hat, just make sure that the hat is inside of the square bracket as well. And then the next piece that we covered was the wild cards and optional characters, which was in this case, the dot itself could be an optional character or a wild card character. If you want to use the dot specifically, you have to escape it by using a reverse slash. Same thing with the question mark because it also is a wild card type of a character or an optional character. And the asterisk is another one of those things that's a wild card optional character. So if you want to use those things specifically, literally, you would have to escape them using a reverse slash. And then you have the meta characters and the repetitions, which we learned with using these various patterns and how to repeat them by doing either the asterisk or the plus sign or by actually providing a specific range or a number of repetitions that you would want for it. And finally, we have the uh, starts with, ends with and grouping, which is what we did over here. So this was, I for me, it was very, very useful. I hope you enjoyed it. I do apologize if you hear a screaming baby in the background. My neighbor's, uh, my neighbor's baby is losing its mind. And I don't want to uh, stop talking because I feel like if I stop talking, you'll hear the screaming much easier. So I have to find ways to overshadow, overpower the screaming. But hopefully, apart from that, you actually found this useful and this was a useful video for you. I know I will be referring back to this video regularly because it's actually something that I find very useful for Python and log analysis and any of those things. So um, that is it for the video today. 
If you got any value out of this video or if you've gotten any value out of this channel, I do encourage you to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified the next time that a video comes out. And I would love to also see you in our comment section. And if you didn't already know, we have the Hackaholics Anonymous membership community that's already launched as well. And I'm super excited about that. So I would love for you to check that out as well. I think there's going to be a lot of value for you there as well. It's your boy Hank Hackerson at Hank Hacks Hackers, your favorite networking system attacker slash protector. Love, peace, and chicken grease. If no one else loves you, Hank loves you, and I will see you in the next video later.